Well I just got word of a Bicont over at Cruzon, so I popped over and I didn't take the camera unfortunately because it would have been well worth it, there's some wonderful stuff. But I got leeks, I got tomatoes of various varieties, two sorts of cabbage and uh, some peppers. But what I also got for one euro was this little, I've been looking for one of these for ages and it's a nice old one. And uh, a little bit of woodworm, but a bit of white spirit will clear that up. And that will go nicely by my fireplace here, so say for just one euro. And it works too, it's perfectly all right. Well, that was another hard day's graft. We've, I've trimmed off here, all this bush tree here, and cleared the front here. You can hear a nightingale in the background there, lovely now, singing around the garden. Trimmed all this bush right back so we can see the fig tree now. Going round to the garden again. And I've managed to weed out the whole garden today and then motivate with my mantis having been redone, trimmed this bush down here, got the great line up properly against the wall, pulled all those weeds out from there. And now we can see I've just planted in the onions again because they got a right mess, there wasn't many of them, so we put another bunch of onions in. And I've replanted some of the broad beans and sprayed them for black fly. Taters are alright, just need weeding in between. Here though we've put some canes up for the peas and there's some fresh peas there, which I'm going to in just a moment to have with some new potatoes that came out when I was digging this over because there were some old ones from last year and they'd just grown up. Leeks I've put in here now, carrots you can see coming up over here. So we've got peas, leeks, carrots, radish, more leeks, everlasting spinach, beet and then the flower bed there. If we come round to the other side, listen to that Beautiful nightingale. I've got some lovely red hot poker there coming up through the roses. Isn't that gorgeous? There's all the rubbish from today. Black currants there. Two marrows, three marrows now out from the greenhouse. And we've got cauliflower and cabbages, two sorts going along here. We planted the sweet corn all up into one bed there. Kept one of those everlasting spinach with the seed. Another marrow there, right up to more spinach, more. Uh, Right up to more cabbage. So round into the greenhouse, topped up the water, mole plant there, and I've now got two tomatoes I'd managed to grow from seed. Also new tomatoes today growing up here now, and I've put three peppers in there. And uh, we've got melons coming here, here, and cucumbers there, and I've sprinkled some lettuce seed in here. You can see one lettuce up already. So that should be quite successful. So we can see here some peas that have grown already. We'll pick some of those for tonight. So I think we'll have these new potatoes, a few of my peas and the leaf beets, the last of it, uh, for tonight's tea, possibly with some tin tuna and tomato. Well, everything's cooking away there nicely. I think I'll go and get some more cherries in for sweet now. Right, there we are. I didn't watch Teddy tonight and eat those cherries. Oh, we'll just look at that. Talk about eating healthy. All those new potatoes straight from the garden today. The leaf beet and apart from the tuna, which might have a bit of invisible mercury in it. Can't guarantee that. What a lovely and um, healthy meal. Which I can now sit down to enjoy as the blackbird sings in the background and the sun sets gradually over my garden here. It's lovely. Nope, I'll have the cherries later. I have a nice half of fresh melon now with a teaspoon.
About two and a half, I should think. Here we go. Lovely fish. Look at that. That's a lovely one. It's an absolute stonker. Yes. Absolutely beautiful fish, look. Isn't that a lovely, a lovely big bream? It's coming on to an hour three pound, I would think. There we go. We've had an invitation to go and try out a new lake where I've got the opportunity to possibly even stock it and fish it annually at Simon's Place at Cludier. And uh, no idea what it's going to be like, but it sounds interesting. I sat and I won't even find it, so it could be awkward trying to find it today. But uh, it's a beautiful day, so we'll give it a go and see. Not such a big fish this one, but uh, got the right tackle. Ready? We'll have this one out. What have we got then? Oh yes, a nice little fish. In fact, what is it? It's not a carp, it is a bass. It is indeed a bass. Beautiful bass. Just look at that then. And there's a fine fish for you. So a very nice bass. Well we'll just take the hook out of this one. So a lovely little bass look. Take the hook out of this one. So a lovely little bass look. And it is a nice bass already, so it's about a pound and a half, not a huge fish, but a nice condition. We'll put this one back in again. We're going to catch these later again. Although I like to eat them, we want to get, keep the stock up in here for a while. So I'm going to... My name is Bertrand Paris. I am living in bessin sur gartan a village étape. So we are here just nearby the Gartan River. In Bessin, it's the biggest river. We have many small rivers just nearby, but this part is a part for trout fishing. There is a part in this picture, very interesting here. White small fishes here, barbo, perch, and uh, pikes, I think we said. Sambre, just nearby on the, the river is getting bigger and bigger. And there are a less -a -la -pont. currents uh, next, just mm. next nearby on the, on the left part of the river, especially. So, the weather is fine, we are in June, and then I expect you to have a good, good days for fishing. What's the name? Hmm. Digital. Ah, yes. It's a digital. It, because it's, uh, in Latin it's digitalis. Uh, nearly seven days to get there, we get to the ocean.
View, I'm sure, up there. my little potager again and uh, I'm going to go at what's left of these lovely pink poppies. The last pink thing I did a few days ago, sold only a few days afterwards, um, last week. So I'll do another one for myself. I did really want one for the bedroom but if they sell, they sell. So we've got these lovely cornflowers, white and uh, blue and uh, the poppies and even some marigolds coming in between. Again, bumblebees and butterflies buzzing around. It's absolutely beautiful. Rather hot so I'm going to leave my hat today. And we'll get this set up so that I can paint acrylics again. So the view I want is going to come in just to the right of the building here, taking all of these flowers down here right the way through and hopefully up to just about this up to just about this tree here. So we're going to take in from there through to here. That should be the whole composition here in a nice curve or arc coming around the bottom of the canvas here and maybe get the trees in the top. So have we captured the feeling of that? On there. And maybe a few last touches, let's have a look and see. Earlier on we did the walnuts, prepared those ready for pickling and for tonight's tea something a little different but it's not so much the matter of what we put in the recipe, uh, it's like any painting, it's the timing of what we put to what. So in painting I might put the dark colours in first and then the lights at the end, the highlights at the end. Here, simple uh, ingredients, soy sauce, a little powdered garlic, some ground ginger, onions, potatoes, sliced up chicken, um, a frozen mixture of uh, Chinese vegetables which is simple for tonight's dinner and some spicy sarit so just a little just to give it that extra piquant and we could add more but the idea now is to get the onions going, caramelise those then we shall add the sarit so, then we shall add uh, then we shall add the chicken, the ground ginger and the uh, garlic then the potatoes, all in that order, then a little soy sauce and finally the uh, vegetables. And in that order one flavour should go into the other and it should be a nice stir fry at the end of it all. And there's plenty here, I'm going to have enough to warm a little bit up later or tomorrow for my dinner tomorrow as well. So just be inventive with your food as well as with your colours and painting. So we've got our wok ready and it's just a matter of adding the ingredients. Always helps if we light it. It's a handy thing about this lovely range, it's got a it's got its own ring, spatula. As I said I want to really get one flavour going into another so that the more delicate things take on the flavours of the stronger things at the end. If I start with my onions, 
you know your onions and put the chorizo into that and then we can add a little brown ginger not too much, just enough to give it a tang I prefer real ginger but I haven't uh, fresh ginger but I haven't got yet at the moment so that will have to do it and this is a quick snack in the evening so I don't need it really Then again, garlic could use fresh, but happy enough with what I've got here. I do find this way of doing the garlic quite handy. I have a fair garlic in here. Here it's started to sizzle now nicely. And I'll just keep that mixing up so that the olive oil blends it all together. The important thing is to get all those flavours into a sauce here, first of all. And what I've also decided to do tonight is to add a few pine nuts. I've also decided to do tonight to add a few pine nuts to this dish. I do like pine nut mash, but uh, this gives it that nuttiness. We just fry those at this time so that they'll just toast slightly in here. Let's just get a bit more nuttiness to this dish. Add things as you think flavours will suit, very much as you will paint. Imagine what nuttiness will be like, imagine what the onions will be like, imagine what the spicy sweets will be like. Now that's coming on very nicely, that's just starting to caramelise and crisp up. The thing is to get that into a nice mixture. So that all the flavours will go into the meat when I put the meat in. Now I need a drink to go with this, and what better than to take a bottle of sangria? Not a Spanish dish, but you know, I'm thinking of the sweet to go with this, this flavoursome dish with uh, the garlic and so on in it. So cold sangria in a nice glass. So cold sangria into a jug, and then I can use a small wine glass just to take smaller samples and sweep up a whole glass of it. Drink also the jug that would be nice, keep it in the fridge. And then I can pour myself a wee glass. As Floyd said, to keep myself uh, fresh, doing this very hard work. All that's lovely. Back to this now, which is just starting to brown up. I think it's time now to add the chicken so that those flavours crisp into that. One thing at a time, it's not all one wet soggy mess of frozen veg. The water will spread out this flavour with the soya sauce later. Mix that well in. Again, we'll let that just get coated in the olive oil and the flavourings. And just crisp up a little so we get the crisp. And again, it's like painting, it's texture. Rough against smooth, light against dark, warm against cool. Here we're going to have the more subtle flavours against the slightly spicier flavours and the tenderness of the uh, soft vegetables against the crispiness of the stuff that we're doing now. And the idea is to, is to have different textures like art or like music. And cooking is an art in it, an art form in itself. Art, craft, very difficult to... Distinctions to make between, aren't they? What is an art and what is a craft? I guess art is something more individual, more personal, but cooking can be that as well. Okay, I think those flavours are in okay, so I'm going to add my potato that I microwaved yesterday, baked some nice new potatoes up. They can go in. And again, I hope to crisp these up a little. So again, I want to get the flavours mixing in. They're just about soaked up all that grease. I don't want to be adding too much more weight to my already larger diaphragm. So the chicken hasn't got much fat in it, and it's only the olive oil in this and a little bit of the sweet, so that's going to be fattening. All the rest is vegetable and flavourings. Now look at that, isn't that nice? That's a meal in itself. I mean, you could even have the vegetables separately, but I'm going to do a stir-fry type dinner. 
And again, I want those to crisp a little now. And that's just browning up nicely now. These pine nuts have now roasted a little on there, so the flavouring of the pine nuts will be coming out into the potatoes. So we're going to get a nice nutty flavoured base. The chicken is now taken on the oil. And we're just starting to crisp up some of the surfaces. Right, we have the vegetables and the soya sauce to do last, but I don't want to add the soya sauce at this stage because I want that to mix in with the vegetables more, not to overpower the delicate flavour we've already got with the meat. So I'm going to add this in now. Having been frozen, there'll be plenty of liquid in this. Now this meat's so salty enough, I don't want too much soy sauce, just nice sprinkling across the whole thing. I quite like soy sauce because they used to make the bottle and produce this. I used to live as a child and now six years old in Singapore. And it's got fond memories of both flavours and uh, production in my past. So soy sauce to your taste. And there's enough for two plates here, we'll see how I enjoy it. It's quite handy buying these packs of frozen Chinese veg already made. I know it's cheating, but it's about, on your own you want to look after yourself. What a simple way to do some cooking. So again, we'll flatten that out. Let that... Now I've got to say, the sarizo that I used was a spicy sarizo. So you can use an ordinary one if you want. Right, I think that's ready now to bring across to the plate. And give the sample. So there's plenty there, I mean there's enough there for, for four people or one of me twice. I'll put that there and we'll give it a taste. And of course, I've got to be honest with you, if it's Rubbish? I have to be able to say so. Well now, let's have a taste of this then. Let's bring it towards me a bit. Yeah, sweet, not overpowering, as I had hoped. The flavour's coming out in each section of the cooking that we've done, so that it's not uh, all mangled up. Whatever thoughtful I take is going to have the flavours of itself, or when I put those flavours in. Very good. Try it sometime. Well, there we go. Wish you were here sharing it with me. Cheers. It'd be nice if you could. Last things are, santé. And uh, make the most of my tranquility here. to look up and flavour some. Well I'll tell you what guys, I can eat but one plate full of this is so filling. Delicious and rich. All these different flavours in. I can't manage more than one plate. I just love to wait for another evening. Of course it's something you can always freeze up. So there's the thing. Like art you think of colours that will go well together. You think of flavours that will go together. And experiment and explore and have fun. Cheers. Takes away any of the oil at the end. There's just a nice amount there for me. I've got other work to do tonight, a film to make. All the painting I did in the potty today in the garden. Now after all that, time to take a break, check out the leaves. Back in here, without pouring a glass of sangria over myself. Take it down slightly, that's it. One leg up, two legs up. There we go. Oh, lovely. Busy day, long day painting today in the heat. 
and I've been preparing films ever since. It's really hot here today. Absolutely beautiful. Fun day again. <laughs> 